So let's go ahead and take a look at this fence post. Man, that thing is shot. So we're at a job today that a friend of ours asked me to come over and take a look at. We have a fence in the backyard that has some rotting fence posts. And there are some dead shrubs that we're going to work to get cut out. So just a few little touch-up things that we're going to work on today. I'll show you guys the process that we're going to do that with. So we're going to start by cutting the fence panels off of the post. I'm just going to run a sawzall, a demo blade, and cut the nails off back there. Take the whole panel off. We're going to redig these holes. I'm going to install plenty of drainage rock down in the bottom of the holes and fill them back up with a a bag, bag and a half of quick set concrete. While we're here, I wanted to show you guys that I've already replaced a lot of the posts on this, this fence. You can see I've got all new fence posts along here and I put a new runner up over there, another new fence post and this whole section of fence, the gates and all were rebuilt as well. So uh, we've already been here. This fence is pretty old, but the, uh, the homeowner is actually, this house is actually a rental but the landlord, I feel like it's making a good decision by just repairing it and keeping the fence here for the renters rather than tearing it out or spending a ton of money on installing a whole new fence. And here's the uh, the gate from the inside. I wanted to show you guys, there's some dead shrubs here. They are started to regrow from the ground, but here in middle Tennessee, we had a really harsh winter and it uh, a lot of our shrubbery got frostbit. So we're gonna cut those shrubs out around at the ground level to give them a chance to re-sprout from those sproutlings. So as you guys can tell, I'm attempting to cut these shrubs back stem by stem, hoping to save some of the greenery that had already started to sprout from the ground level, but I uh, was having a difficult time doing that. I kind of just gave up on it right about now with the old hack it off at ground level technique. And here you can see, I'm gonna drop a couple of sticks right in my head. I knew that was coming, but I went with it anyways. So no big deal. Take a look at this load that Andrew's hauling. You, Just take a look at this. Look at this. Andrew's hauling these two sticks to the truck. I think I have that much in one hand. But we're not going to give him a hard time. Unless he beats the truck up. So Andrew thinks that these bolts are probably like a half inch, these lag screws they're holding the gate on. I think they're probably more like a 9 16 just more like a 14 millimeter. Andrew's going to give it the thumb test. They're smaller than the thumb. Andrew has a kind of wide thumb though. So I don't know. Let's see. I'm just going to go over here, grab the socket set, grab my 3 8 inch. Let's see here. Uh, 916s. Right there. So here's a 916s. Oh, too big. Uh huh. Grab that half inch. And Andrew is the winner today. Okay, we're going to zip these off. Andrew, you want to use a uh, manual ratchet? Sure. You sure? A ratcheting wrench, or you want to use some power tools? 
power tools. Okay, let's use some power tools. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna use a little impact gun. It's just like a drill, uh, battery powered. Then I'm gonna use an adapter that I have that'll go into my impact set. Right there, clicked in. And the one that I chose has got a three eighth inch square and that'll go right into my socket. And we're ready to go. I'm gonna go over here and should be good to just zip these off. I'm gonna do so slowly. And we're now that top loose. The top is loose. Andrew, if you'll go ahead and hold the top of the gate there. Okay, well, got it. Right. Now the whole gate is free, so don't let it fall on you. Hold that up if you will, Andrew. All right, now I got the gate. Just gonna set this to the side. All right. Carefully against the siding. So let's go and take a look at this fence post. Man, that thing is shot. I don't want to rock it too hard because if there's anything good left on there, I'd like to use it to help us pull the concrete base out if there's any concrete down there at all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run our saws off right down this crack to cut the nails out of the two by four nailers. I'm gonna do that now. I picked this Sawzall up after Black Friday, <laughs> maybe three or four years ago from Walmart, okay? There's a whole cordless set of hyper tough, 20 volt max power, all right? And the whole set, Sawzall, cordless drill, flashlight, uh, and a little impact was $20. So it's not a Makita or a Milwaukee, but it was also less than $20. So we're gonna cut those off now, hopefully. I might also mention, I'm using a Diablo demo blade Diablo is kind of a premier brand for uh, saw blades and drill bits and those kind of things. Um, their demo blade has carbide teeth, indestructible. It'll cut through metal, wood, and everything really well. It doesn't leave a pretty finish, so I wouldn't do it to do a lot of finishing work, but it will snap those nails off really quickly. and we are free now that that's about all that i can ask out of my little hyper tough battery so we're actually gonna take this guy off and go put it back in the charge because i got three more posts to do <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and see if we can get this fence post out set that pin onto the side and oh my goodness it was already just broke off at the ground look at see if we can get this on camera so there's the rotted portion and we've got the rest of it rotted off right there. So we're gonna get that dug out and replace that. There we go. All right, nice. Yeah, might grab my gloves for this stuff, Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm going to the trailer with it. So it's raining. It's not totally pouring, but it's a good little steady drizzle. But uh, we're gonna keep working. I'm just gonna go ahead and put all of the tools up that we're not using right now. Got the concrete sitting in the truck, just staying dry. Go ahead and put the saws all in there. Check this all in too. And put that just in the bed of the truck for now. We got another job site specimen appearance. All right, look at this. Look at the size of this worm. He's huge. 
So this block is about 12 inches. I, I would guess overall this guy's like eight inches plus, 10 inches stretched out, 12, maybe. But he is feisty. He's not very happy to uh, be hanging out with him. We're gonna put him just right over there. Have a good day, worm. We're going to continue to use the post hole diggers to get this hole down to about 24 inches deep. A set of post hole diggers is basically two small shovels that act like a pair of chopsticks on a hinge. So it's not easy work and Andrew was wishing that we had brought the power auger to drill these holes. But we had only three holes to dig and uh, they were already partially dug from the old post. So we went ahead and used uh, the manual post hole diggers. Once we reach 24 inches of depth, we're going to add 4 inches of crushed stone to serve as a solid base to the post and also to serve as drainage in the bottom of the hole. With a repair job like this one, one of the most critical aspects is to make sure that the new repairs look good when compared to the old section. If you were to set these posts perfectly plumb, but the old posts are way out of level, then your new repair would look out of place as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set these posts level, but I also take a moment to step back and observe the fence as a whole. And I'll try to sight down the line of fence, making sure that nothing looks out of place. After we reinstalled the fence panels and everything looked good, we used some of the old lumber on the outside of the fence as a prop to hold the post and the fence level while we poured and set the new concrete. We'll add some fast set concrete mix and some water to these holes and these posts will be set in about 30 to 45 minutes. Run it, just a little bit, not the whole bag. So we've got the holes filled up with concrete. Now we're gonna go ahead and 
get it soaked with some water. And this is fast setting concrete. It's meant for setting fence posts. And the instructions more or less say to do this right here. I'm gonna get the hole filled up with, con or, uh, with water. Try to make sure it's all around. I'm gonna let it soak in real well. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to uh, mound the concrete up around the pole. No, I embrace. Make sure he gets in the <laughs> hole well. I embrace with you. Oh, oh! <laughs> this goes straight to my nose. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Terrific. Oh. Okay, crapped up trash, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna get the, the water in the hole, get it set up, and we'll all get the gate on after the concrete sets up. We're gonna get the post caps or the post tops cut off of those as well to make sure they match about two inches three inches higher than the top runner got, uh, all the tops cut off the post pink got a little bevel on it got covered in man glitter a little bit of sawdust all right guys so we are wrapping up on this job here we've got the gate post replaced the gate reinstalled the concrete is setting up it's pretty cured already so we got that one done We've got these two behind me done as well. We got the bushes cut out and that's more or less all for this one. So until next time, we're gonna roll on to uh, go grab some late lunch. See you guys.